Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. It is a windy, chilly January afternoon in California. So when you hear some noise around, that's what's happening. Um, anyway, welcome to this episode, which I'm calling Don't Blow Your Top. Now before I get into this episode, which is actually, we're back to doing something with a guitar. I know that the last few videos have been about uh, a record and recording and going and seeing gigs and that type of thing. Um, the point of those was, if you read between the lines, is I'm a firm believer in building quality, durable instruments that play well. So people who can, uh, who do professional work as a musician, if they choose to use a guitar you've made, or even if you're one of those people yourself, I tried to show you some of the mistakes I've made in building these things and how they've affected durability or playability. So this is not going to be about gigs. Uh, it's going to be uh, about uh, a mistake, a cardinal sin that a lot of uh, guitar builders make their first time out. Now, so I don't forget at the end, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, Remember, this is the way I do it. I progress through things. There's a million ways to do it. Do it your way and be happy. Um, if you have a better way, feel free to share that at the bottom so the people who subscribe to me can see that. The goal here is, again, building good quality instruments and doing our hobby a, a favor. So that said, at the end of my videos, uh, you're going to see in the middle, uh, the King Guitar will show up. That's how you subscribe to me. Uh, you can click the playlist. If you're bored, you're on a drive, whatever, you can click it. It'll go through all my videos. Or uh, the other one will make a suggestion for you about something you might want to watch. My email address is the end. I really enjoy hearing from you. In fact, I think I'm going to do an uh, episode in the future about what's coming back to me uh, and share that with you. Um, if you see an eye pop up here, right up here, a little letter I, that means it's an I card. It's telling you that there's a link to something you might want to see. So let's start off with the first I card of this video, which is popping up right now. You'll notice I'm wearing my Smokestack Relics uh, t-shirt. If you don't know who Smokestack Relics uh, is, they're a two-man band out of Colorado. Um, punky, trashy, blues, the way we like it. They've got a song called 61 and 49. I'm putting a link up there right now. So that's the housekeeping. Let's move ahead. Before we hit the bench and where I give you some practical examples, I want to talk to you about this guitar here. This is the very first guitar I ever made. It was a kit I ordered. Um, I had a desire to make a, a cigar box guitar uh, for my daughter Tammy. That's been mentioned in a couple of videos, especially one called Why I Do This. You'll hear that story. There's an iCard popping up right about now about that one. But anyway, I ordered a kit. Uh, it come pretty standard. But I had seen a video that C6 Steve uh, did uh, called Don't Know Why She Loved Me, But She Do. It was filmed at Spitalfields uh, in the basement, which is at Robertson and Alden Boulevard, just outside of Beverly Hills. It's got a bunch of sewing machines in the window if you're ever wanting to go by there. But anyway, that guitar struck me. It was very rude and crude, and it had a spatula that you flip burgers with as the uh, tailpiece, but I really like the matchbook. So this is where I learned about the matchbooks. Thanks, C6 Steve. I also put on uh, something that's been signature to my guitars is these RV sink drains. I've always put them in because they help, but this is a thin box. It's not too durable. And the thing that really messed me up on this was I put, you can see there, I hope, I can, almost, I can almost put my finger under this. The action on this is really high. It's fretted, but I made the fatal error of making the top of the fingerboard the same height as the neck. And that really limits uh, uh, what you can do with the action. Nobody wants to play with a slide all the time, especially the better players. So when you hand out something this big or with this much action, where the strings are this high, the likelihood that your 
guitar is going to be played a lot. Maybe they'll pull it out to do uh, one song. I know Reverend Payton has a song called um, Easy Come, Easy Go, Strings Really High. But other than that, I don't know too many guitarists, cigar box uh, players that use slide all the time. So they need to fret. And when you start having your strings that high and we go to the 12th fret, which is supposed to be one octave above the open string when I push this down it ends up being sharp or even a note higher and then the person's trying to figure out uh, what they're doing so this just doesn't work out so this is what we're going to talk about now this guitar I'm really proud of it uh, I hang it on the wall I think it's the one my family likes the most um, and as, as usual there's going to be a surprise at the end of the video uh, with this guitar Okay, we are on the router table, and I want to start here by showing you that this guitar here, I hope you can see the angle, the uh, frets are actually right even with the top of the guitar uh, cigar box lid, or top, uh, and this one here, the box is actually below the fretboard and the frets considerably so there's a considerable difference between this and this now let's say someone told me I need the strings to be lower on this well that would mean that I'd have to mess with this uh, mess I've got here by the way this is an emblem out of a rig up truck I used to run in the oil fields of uh, western Oklahoma in the Panhandle of Texas in 1983 so that's not going anywhere or I could lower this knot here, which that's a big bolt. So that's got another significance in my life somewhere in my collection of junk. But even if I were to do that, the action is still going to be right on top here and still going to be high. Where this one, uh, I've done a, uh, an episode about this adjustable bridge that I can turn up and adjust and I can cut grooves in here so uh, this is what I'm building right now so this isn't done but there's a number of things I could do I could sand this off I could cut deeper grooves in there um, I could uh, up here when my nut goes in I could cut grooves in there I could make the nut lower there's a number of things I could do but this guitar right here there's zero room to work so let's look at where this all starts, and that's with the neck blank and the fingerboard. Okay, so let's say we're going to build kind of a primitive instrument. We're just going to get our wood. Uh, we're going to draw our own fret lines. Uh, maybe we're not even going to fret this at all. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Maybe we're going to put another piece of wood underneath here to beef this up wherever it needs to be. Uh, that's okay, but we still have a flat surface here to deal with if we're going to do it that way. That's kind of the way the first guitar that I was telling you about was done. You, you get a little bit more advanced. You got this type of thing going on. You've got this glued on here. We're going to work this over. Um, I hate doing flybys, but that's the only way to do it. You've got a flat neck. And um, it's going to, we're going to decide, are we going to put a fingerboard on this? So well, let's say we go to the primitive one and we decide, okay, I, I'm going to go ahead and put a, a fret board that's been cut. Um, and I'm going to put that on there like so. Well, now all of a sudden I've got that much room to deal with. And that's a better situation than just having this flat surface with the box to worry about. Uh, same thing over here. If I put... Uh, one of these that's a nice fingerboard isn't it of course I got a collection of different ones here uh, thou shalt not covet uh, my fingerboards just remember that but I'm gonna put say this one on here um, and of course there I've got that again so a decision point happens right here and whether you're doing frets here or, or, or right on the, your piece of wood that you used or you're putting a fret board or you're cutting a, a different one this area right here is going to matter or the absence of that area right here is going to matter with 
how your box sits in there. Now everybody knows I like Camacho boxes. In fact, I'm probably, uh, since I've been making these videos, responsible for a boom in Camacho business. I don't know if anybody's smoking cigars, but uh, I think there's a demand for their box. But you can see that these box lids are pretty thick. Now some of your standard boxes, they're pretty thin. Uh, and so you might be able, in this situation, if you're using a thin box, you might be able to get away with just notching out the box and your your box lid would come up about this far there because it's thin but using one of these in this thickness the best you're going to get is right even with the top of the fingerboard of course the frets are going to be a little bit taller uh, but this is not a desirable situation um, it's even worse on one that you're just using the board and setting this up on here because if you look this is so much higher there there we go we're in the camera and you would literally have to in order to get things up where it's the strings at the right height you would almost have to route out down double the box thickness to get to where you need but here you're gonna have to route out at least pretty much the same uh, distance down into the neck as the box thickness here okay so I want to show you what I've done here I, I, I take a box lid and then I lay it next to the router bit and I don't want it up that high definitely uh, but what I want to do is I want to adjust it uh, down you see how high that is it's about this much higher you know, I just want to make sure the power is completely unplugged off of one of these things because if this thing kicks on while I'm work and you're going to end up with a problem so what i've done here is if you look right there you're going to see that the router bit is just a tad under the thickness of the box lid let me see if i can zoom in here so you can see that a little better you see right there there's about a sixteenth of an inch this has you have to adjust it for what you're trying to do and then of course you lock the bit down and go to work so on this guitar here let me pop this out pop the lid off here what I've done is I've routed this out by turning this over and taking it down the level of the box now or the box lid you see here that that is there's a huge difference between that and there well what I've had to account for is that the fingerboard is already on here so my measurement actually goes to here you follow me here and so this is set all the way up to here now the reason I wanted it just a tad below the thickness of the box this box lid right here was because when everything comes together and this is going into uh, sitting up against the box lid if this is just a tad shorter it will hide this joint right here let's see if I can pop this together quick and, and show you what I mean see there that's hid well so again when you're adjusting your router bit this is actually going to come up a lot higher uh, almost twice the thickness of the box but you want this is something you want to measure a number of times now when you start getting this cut out you're going to end up probably using a hand saw. you can see the mark of the original uh, line here that I used to cut in this inset for the coil but you can see the line I made right there when I routed in so the box lid would sit flat on this but just slightly above that line there that's going to give me plenty of room to adjust my strings again I can play with the knot the grooves in the knot I can play with sanding 
uh, working this down so it's flatter I can cut deeper grooves but it's going to give me a way to make sure that my action is right and that's oh so critical so one more time uh, point of the lesson here is if you've done this to yourself and put uh, this flat with the top of the box and left yourself no room to work your action can only be taken down so far and then the intonation of the guitar changes and it becomes undependable to the technical player we're over here uh, we've got this is a de desirable situation it gives me some room here uh, when I hook up uh, my my coil here I can adjust this up and down with the screws uh, and so this is the much more desirable situation if you've got a guitar like this or you've done this just get another piece of wood nobody says you've got to use a cigar box lid uh, start over cut some things pull the neck out of it uh, I you notice I bolt my necks on now I don't glue them on because then taking the top of the box off is a nightmare so this is a pretty easy fix if you want to go back into some of the guitars you've made before Okay, so there it is. I hope that helped you. Uh, this is something I wish I would have known and paid attention to a long time ago. But as I said in the beginning of the video, let's take a look. This is going to pop up right about now and it might surprise you. Let's have a look. The Maxbook Collection. Put my slide at. Okay.